Hello. It has been a standard increment of time for my regular scheduled programming. You didn't believe that for a second, did you? Well, since I'm so good at shitting the bed on this platform, I figured why not do things a little different today? So instead of doing a general overview of a gun, today we're gonna be talking about products because I'm a shill. Actually, everything you're about to see today, I uh, paid for with my own hard earned money. My opinions are entirely my own until somebody compensates me and my integrity comes crumbling around me. I keep hearing that if I make YouTube videos, I'm just gonna keep getting bribe money and free shit, but I'm still waiting. Barrett, I know you're out there. An M82 would look pretty nice on that wall behind me, don't you think? I'll even settle for an M95 because a bad company too. I'm that desperate. So on to the subject at hand. Today we have two offerings from the same company, a company called Lage Manufacturing. Now, Lage Manufacturing, among other things, specializes in upper receivers for the Mac family of submachine guns. That's right, this angry little shitbox right here. What are you gonna do, jam at me? Oh, you bitch. Yeah. So what we have here are two receivers for the Mac 10. Right here you have the Lage Max 1031, and this is a nine millimeter upper receiver. And this is the Max 1015, a 556 upper receiver for the Mac 10. I didn't believe it either until I saw it. Now, before I take a look at these individually, you might be wondering, Jay, your absent-mindedness never ceases to amaze me. Why on earth would you go out of your way to source a Mac 10 and purchase one just to throw a bunch of goofy ass upper receivers on? Why didn't you just buy an M4, an M16, an AK, a Tommy gun, or whatever tickles your fancy? Well, totally real person that totally asked that real question just now, there's a perfectly good explanation for that. It's time for a brief history lesson. So in May of 1986, the Hughes Amendment was passed. Now, of course, I'm oversimplifying this, but essentially it banned ownership of machine guns by private citizens from that point moving forward. But if you already had a machine gun and it was legally registered prior to that date, it would be grandfathered in, and therefore you'd be allowed to keep it and transfer it amongst other private individuals so long as you go through the proper channels. We creatively refer to these as transferable machine guns, or as I like to call them, stupidly expensive hot commodities. Why do I say that? Well, because of the finite nature of machine guns in the US, the more contemporary, familiar, and desirable ones like the list I rattled off before are prohibited expensive. An M16, for example, costs, oh, I don't know, $35,000 at the time of this video for a complete rifle. Or possibly more, depends on who's selling it. I know what I have. Cash is king. No low balls. I know what I have. But any flavor of Mac, at least at the time I bought mine, could be had for man, between five and seven thousand dollars, which relatively speaking is a lot less. So you could get one of these and a variety of upper receivers for a fraction of the cost of something else. So speaking of upper receivers, we're going to take a look at these individually on the tabletop from butt to front butt, talking about the individual specs and features and what makes these things dick. Okay, ladies and germs, here it is, the Max 1030. As I stated earlier, this is a 9mm upper receiver for the Mac 10, and it drops on with no modifications. Let's throw this shitter together and go over the manufacturer specs before taking a deep dive. That had better have been a smooth transition. If you're wondering why there's a rubber band holding the back grip panel on, Hey, shut up. Don't worry about it. I didn't break uh. anything. So the current retail price on this is $1,095. The overall length when attached to a lower receiver with an eight and a half inch stock fully deployed is 28.5 inches. The length of just the upper receiver is 17 and 3 8 inches. If you're a weirdo and that really matters to you, the barrel is eight and 3 8 inches with half by 28 threading. Now, what gets really interesting is the unloaded weight of this whole arrangement being only 7.2 pounds, which is quite an outstanding feat considering the base Mac in what I call the glorious shipbox configuration weighs 8.2 pounds. So the Max 1031 is made mostly of aluminum. So even though it's physically much larger, it weighs an entire pound less than... Where did I throw that thing? Ow, fuck. Mmm. My blood tastes like pennies. But yeah, this whole upper receiver weighs an entire pound less than this uh, glorified paperweight right here. Back in the trash. <laughs> that just goes to show how important material selection is when designing a firearm. Now, what many people, including myself, consider to be the most attractive thing on the spec sheet is the rate of fire. So a Mac 10 has a native firing rate that's right around 11 to 1200 rounds per minute or 20 bullets per second. And that's not counting the other Macs that are even faster than that. Now, pair that with a magazine capacity of only 30 rounds and basically nothing to hold on to, you can see why that would be a problem. 
but what? the Max 1031 drops that firing rate down to a comfortable 600 rounds per minute. Now for all my Upers up there, that's roughly half of the original firing rate. But if for some reason high firing rates are your thing, first of all, congratulations on your endless wealth and ammo budget, but you can purchase additional buffers for the bolt that will shorten its travel and increase the cyclic rate, use a distic turd gobbler. Okay, so let's actually take a look at the individual features on this thing. First thing worth pointing out is that there's a pair of set screws hiding under here. Now, if you're anything like me and think, I'm not reading that god dang instruction manual, I'm a stubborn boy who doesn't understand consequences, then you need to listen up. So these are tensioning screws and they adjust the fit between your upper and lower. So if the lower is all half-assed and rattling around when installed, feeling like it's held on with scotch tape and bubble gum, you need to adjust your screws. And if it's so tight that installing the upper feels like you're sucking a golf ball through a garden hose, you guessed it, adjust your god dang screws. It's good enough. Next, we've got the optic rail that is uninterrupted for the entire length of the upper receiver. So you've got plenty of real estate for red dots, magnifiers, scopes, backup irons, lasers, flashlights, and everything in between. But <laughs> if you're an absolutely thirsty slut of attack bro that needs more shit on your shit, there's additional provisions on the sides here for more rail sections. You can see these threaded holes right here. Now, I wish they would just throw in the towel and mill a couple of M-lock slots on the sides, but I also wish my dad would come back from getting milk and cigarettes, and I know that's not gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> I mean, come on, you've demonstrated that you're capable because these M-Lock shaped holes are here, so just do it. Do it! But yet again, the fact that Lage's proprietary rails are sold for $60. I don't expect any change in that department anytime soon. And while I'm showing off this end of the upper, we've got another rail on the bottom here, which I've mounted a synthetic dong, and there's a hand stop built in right here. Flipping it around and moving back a little bit, we've got the charging handle, which I'm glad to say is non-reciprocating and spring-loaded. So no matter where the bolt may or may not be, this will always remain forward. Ow, my ears. So if you like doing your cool guy C-clamp grip like I do, then you are totally safe and you won't bust your thumbs on it. Now this charging handle is really nice on paper and has no negative bearing on the performance of this upper receiver, but I do have a minor gripe with it. It is tiny. Now I've got pretty large hands, like able to hit the mag release on a G3 large hands. So my big old pink sausagey fingies have a hard time getting a good grip on this thing. And since it's an open bolt submachine gun, you're going to be interfacing with this charging handle a lot. Now, usually when I'm running charging handles, I like to either use the palm of my hand or hook a couple of fingers on there. But on this thing, I have to do this weird like nipple pinch kind of thing. Nope. Stop it. Bam. Quit. So yeah, just a personal preference thing. Not a huge fan of this charging handle personally. Now I do see that there are a couple of pinholes on there, so I'm hoping I might be able to drive those out and swap this out for a larger one, but I'm not sure if that's possible. <laughs> Flipping it over, we've got the ejection port and bolt visible. Yep, that's an ejection port. Uh, no complaints here. Now it is a pretty large opening. Now I personally like this because it's easier to visually inspect if there's ammo in the firearm, and it's also easier to reach in there and pluck out anything that would commonly get in there and jam your gun up, like stuck casings, rocks, the tip of my penis, small animals, fecal matter, you get the picture. Now you see the bolt here, and from what I can tell, it's some sort of derivative of maybe an M11 style of bolt, and it works just fine. No complaints once again. Now the magazine situation is something that I have a love-hate relationship with. So the name Max 10 31 implies two things. Max 10 implies MAC 10, and 31 implies the magazine pattern. The MAX 1031 is designed around the drum magazine for the Suomi KP31. The Suomi KP31 is an SMG originating from Finland in, you guessed it, 1931. Now you might be thinking, what the fuck, Ooh. why? Well, that makes two of us. Now the KP31 drum magazine is a really good design. It holds 71 rounds of nine millimeter and is considered to be the best drum magazine for a submachine gun in a military context. It was so good, in fact, that the legendary PPSH-41 drum magazine is a direct copy of it. So if I was designing a nine millimeter SMG with the intent of long strings of fire without reloading, and I also designed it over a decade ago when these things hit the market, then yeah, I can see why they chose it. But I would really like to see more consideration towards modern magazine patterns if this product line continues to evolve. There's an overwhelming amount of 9mm magazine patterns today that would fit the bill. And I'm going to rattle them off in a hip, cool musical number. Ready? Let's go. Clock mags. Just 
just do it. CZ Scorpion mags can come too. They're they're cool. They they both come in the titty configuration and everything. Ooh. Now I give full credit to the reliability and lineage of the KP31 drum magazine, but this was a drum that was introduced over 90 years ago, and I have concerns about the continued availability of these things. Now Lage does sell a proprietary 30 round stick magazine for this upper, but they're $65 a piece. It's also worth mentioning that these uppers are not compatible with standard KP31 stick magazines. Just the drums, those weird quad stat coffin magazines and these new production sticks from Lage. It has something to do with the original KP31 sticks being double stack double feed and this upper is designed around the drums which are single feed. Look at it. Look at that single feed. Look at that shit. Oh my goodness look what we got here. Hello. Now if Toby can be a good boy and not interrupt anything he can stick around. And if I really have to drive the point home I'm not a huge fan of loading and using this pattern in a magazine. You see, the magazines have this little tab on the back here, and that aligns with a track on the inside of the magwell. And if you attempt to load a stick magazine and it's not perfectly straight like that, they can get stuck halfway in, and then you have to forcefully twist them back into alignment to pop it out and try again. I think that switching to a more accessible and modern magazine pattern would be a good idea in anticipation of Suomi drums drying up in the future. So that concludes the breakdown of the Max 1031. Now, what do I think of this thing as a whole? How does it handle? Is it reliable? Is it a good purchase? Why is there so much evidence supporting the existence of Sasquatch? Damn! Well, I'm glad to report this thing is wonderful. It handles great. It's robust. It feels solid. And I love the black coloration. And this thing purrs like a kitten. Oh, the Max 1031. Yeah, it, it's fine. Overall, it's an excellent full auto shooting experience with a comfortable rate of fire that allows you to savor your 30, 50, or 71 round magazines. There's very little muzzle climb and perceived recoil, and it shoots an affordable caliber. The modularity available to the Max 1031 essentially lets you deck out a 50 year old submachine gun with modern upgrades, and I couldn't be happier. Reliability is also excellent with one small exception. One of my Lage stick magazines just doesn't really work sometimes, so I don't use it. Oh, do you hear that? That's the sound of $65 going down the goddamn toilet. So I myself have put at least a thousand rounds through mine, suppressed and unsuppressed with a wide variety of ammo, ranging from 115 grain FMJs all the way up to 158 grain subsonics. It also handles brass, aluminum, and steel case ammo with no issues. But yeah, this is an awesome investment. If you have any plans on getting a machine gun in the near future, or you already have a Mac and you're looking for a good way to enjoy it in modern times, this is a great way to do it. Okay, so that's the Max 1031 in a nutshell. So let's set this aside and whip out this glorious hog of an upper receiver, the Max 1015, which I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for. But if you are short on time and you skip to this part of the video without watching the whole thing, then that's totally fine. That's why I put the chapters down below. You're gonna be missing a little bit of context, but it doesn't fucking matter. Look, shooting footage. Okay, are you all ready to butt chug another segment on the tabletop? Because uh, I don't feel like splitting this into two videos and making you guys wait another four months. So let's do it. So this is one of the newer offerings from this company, and it's a welcome addition for sure. Now, there are other companies that have announced intent to make rifle caliber Mac uppers, but this is the only one that has actually been released as of right now. But if anybody else comes out with a rifle caliber upper receiver, uh, gimme gimme. So the manufacturer specs directly from Lage's website are as follows. Current retail price on this is $3,195. That's right, this thing costs exactly one SCAR 17. <laughs> Overall length when attached to a lower is 34 inches. The unloaded weight is 8.5 pounds, which once again is astonishing when you compare it to the weight of the regular angry shit box. Barrel length is 10.5 inches, which is about as short as you'd probably like to go if you care about ballistics and nerd shit like that. And the rate of fire is pretty widely ranged at 790 to 950 rounds per minute. This is of course depending on ammo choice and your gas settings. It's also worth noting that there are two variants of this 5.56 upper, one of which I'm sure most people will opt for. This one, which has a fully captured recoil system that keeps the bolt and all of its guts inside the upper. And there's a second option which utilizes an AR buffer tube. Now of course this option gives you more freedom to adjust your shooting experience, but you'd have to permanently modify your lower receiver by drilling a hole right here in the back of it. And also by doing this you lose your ability to have easily uh -huh. 
collapsible or folding stocks. Now that whole system works by using a guide rod to impinge on an AR buffer through that hole you just drilled through a hunk of metal that costs more than a fucking used car. So if that's your thing, I won't judge you, at least not openly. Now like the 9mm upper, this is also available for a wide variety of Macs, so don't worry if you have a Mac 11 or whatever else. Okay, once again, you have tensioning screws back here underneath the rear of the receiver, and you can fiddle with those shits as much as you want to get the perfect fit between your upper and lower. The optic rail is thankfully in the same spot as every other civilized rifle on planet Ooh, Earth. But the AK! I said civilized, goddammit! But I wouldn't recommend mounting any actual optics forward of this line. From here forward, it's all handguard, and that may not have the same rigidity and repeatability as using the rail that is just machined into the receiver. But for lights and lasers or backup irons, it's just fine. There's actually something really cool about this whole situation up here, but I will save it for later just to keep tickling the frenulum of your interests for just a few moments longer. The charging handle. Thank God, this thing is a massive improvement over the 9mm upper. Once again, it's non-reciprocating and spring-loaded, and this charging handle looks like a god dang doorknob, and it is so much easier to get a good grip with. Whoa, nice charging handle. The perfect length. Nice girth. Not too long, not too short. All right, enough gushing about the charging handle. I'm gonna flip this over and reveal the ejection port, which to no surprise is essentially identical to an AR. It doesn't have a dust cover, but it has a very similar appearance and uses a shell deflector for my lovely wrong-handed friends out there. Now I know what you're totally thinking. Wow, we got this far and Jay hasn't bitched about this thing one time. Well, the time is now, buckle up. The bolt situation. While innovative and allows for drop-on compatibility without permanently modifying my original Ingram lower, I really don't like how this was approached. You can see when removed from the upper, the entire bolt mechanism is held together with this little piece of sheet metal that's just been bent into the shape of a hook. While in theory this should work, unfortunately this sheet metal hook has the tendency to, well, bend out of place, making it impossible to lock the bolt back and safely remove it. Now to remove the bolt, you need to pull it back to the point where the front of it lines up with this engraving right here, but not far enough to where it catches the sear. Then while it's being held in place, you need to jam a Mac 10 magazine or something of equal size into the grip. This ideally pins that hook up into the cavity and captures the bolt. Then you carefully ease the handle forward until that hook, once again, ideally grabs onto the bolt. Remove the Mac mag, and then you can finally remove the upper and the bolt just slides out the back. Now, so far this has been an issue for me on three separate occasions, and thankfully it's easy just to bend the hook back into place, but don't bend it too much because then it will just always be held together and the bolt won't go forward anymore. Now, I'd be lying if I said this whole setup didn't subtly scare the shit out of me while trying to carefully handle it, knowing it can just pop goes the weasel and bada bing bada boom, you've just been skull fucked and you don't even get a cool story out of it. Is it a deal breaker? Well, it's the only 5.56 upper on the market, so I'm obligated to say no. Magazines. Oh my god, you guys, it takes standard AR magazines. I can buy mags for this thing at a gun shop. Crazy. Holy shit. Incomprehensible. I'm not being smug at all. So far I've used PMAGs of varying capacities, Lancers and GI mags of various manufacture with 100% reliability. The only problematic magazines I've dealt with so far is when somebody tried to run this with a thermal magazine, in which I make a promise to myself to not be a gun snob, but they are literally the same price as a PMAG, just get those, God damn it. Now eventually I plan on getting some sort of drum magazine for this like a Magpul D60 and then proceed to load it with only 5 or 10 rounds at a time because I am a living contradiction. Now speaking of magazines, the magwell is basically a standard AR-15 pattern. Now it's very far forward of the grip, so they went ahead and put an ambidextrous magazine release here so you can just use your offhand to strip magazines out. Now this is a little bit of a weird setup, but honestly this is the best they could do without doing anything weird like sticking the mag out the side like an FG-42 or out the top like a Bren gun, though that would be really cool. But honestly, it doesn't have any negative effect on anything I do with this thing, so I'm totally fine with it. Okay, last and certainly not least, we've got the whole ass forend here, and I was alluding earlier that there was something really cool about this. And that cool thing is the fact that this is all standard AR-15 components. The barrel, the gas tube, gas block, handguard, all of it is standard AR. So unlike the 9mm upper, you can fully reconfigure this into something entirely different if you want to. You can make this into a short PDW build. You can make it into a long, heavy-barreled squad support weapon type of deal. You can make 
make it into a 16 inch carbine. The sky is the limit. As for me, I haven't really decided what I wanted to do with mine. The only aftermarket upgrades I have on this are these Midwest industry folding combat iron sights and this obnoxious fucking break. This is a JMAC LAF 28, which stands for loud and flashy half by 28 thread pitch, but I think we all know what it actually means. It means loud as fuck. Now, essentially this thing reduces all of the recoil and converts it into absolutely mind numbing and tooth shattering concussion. Shut up, it's fun, I like it. Not all guns need to be practical. Okay, as a whole, I am glad I got this upper receiver when I did because, well, I didn't really think one day I would own what is technically a fully automatic 5.56 assault rifle uh, because that's what it is. It's got a detachable box magazine, intermediate caliber, and it is select fire from semi to fully automatic. And overall, with the money I have sunk into this arrangement, I'm still at like a third of a cost of an M16. But that's not saying a whole lot when it comes to the longevity of the value, if that makes sense. The reason I'm saying that is because right now, Max are slowly and steadily creeping up to and beyond the $10,000 mark. So when you combine the cost of one of these upper receivers with that, you're kind of stepping into uh, FNC or AC556 territory. So you need to make that decision for yourself if this is worthwhile to you. The rate of fire is higher than the 9mm variant and it does fire a more powerful caliber, but in my opinion, I think it's just as controllable so long as you know how to actually handle one of these things. Even before I got this obnoxious tank of a break and was still running the birdcage style of muzzle device from the factory, I think it's just as controllable as the 9mm version, although it does fire a little faster, but overall it's a very pleasant shooting experience. Now keep in mind, I still haven't really messed with this Odin Works adjustable gas block up here and you know, I could dick with that and get a slower rate of fire or a lower perceived recoil but honestly i haven't really felt the need to do that so i think if you already own a mac or if you're getting one soon this is absolutely worth picking up at least until the next cool whiz bang rifle caliber upper comes out now lage if you just happen to make a belt fed upper for one of these in the future i will humbly accept the burden of testing that out for you but if I want to compare both of the upper receivers you've seen today directly against each other, I'm going to say that the Max 1031 is definitely a better choice. The upper is way cheaper. The ammo is much cheaper. The magazine situation kind of sucks, but once again, that's a minor complaint. It's not really that big of a deal. If I'm ever taking somebody out to the range and they've never fired a machine gun before, this is absolutely the first one I give them to shoot under my supervision. So while I have minor complaints about both of these upper receivers, I think that they are decently outweighed by the benefits they bring to the table. Lage Manufacturing and other Mac adjacent companies are doing awesome work bringing a modern SMG experience for a relatively low cost. All right, so that's all I've got for you guys today. I really hope that you enjoyed this somewhat serious and informative content. I don't really consider myself a review channel, but you know, I think these upper receivers are really neat, so I thought it was worth sharing with you guys. And if you did like this kind of content where I take somewhat of a deeper dive and a somewhat serious look into stuff like this, then I would love to know. Just go ahead and drop a comment and let me know what you thought. And speaking of comments, I think I'm gonna start a fun little tradition here on the channel where I pick a favorite comment of mine and feature it in the next video where I will highlight it and respond to it. It's my sneaky way of uh, increasing interaction for the algorithm. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I will leave you with this little piece of advice. Get a bidet, wash your ass. See ya.